Hello and welcome from the most contemplative place known to humankind. Yes, you guessed it, from toilet. Toilet is a place where most brilliant ideas and inventions come to mind. And today we'll talk about one of those inventions. Toilet paper, the most important scroll on earth okay, mm, and beyond. Wanna know more about toilet paper? Let's roll! <music> toilet paper, as we know today, white and soft is quite a new invention, not even a century old. So what did we use before? How did it all start? In ancient times, people used basically anything that worked, hand included. To this day, left hand in some Islamic regions of the world is considered as an unclean hand. But apart from that, there were substitutes like grass, leaves, moss, ferns, fruit skins, hemp, sand, water and snow. More abrasive included rocks, stones, pebbles, seashells, corn cobs and plant husks. But while civilization progressed, other options were introduced. Wood shavings, frayed anchor cables, animal furs, or even wool. Ancient Greeks and Romans used pieces of ceramic obtained from broken pottery called pesoi. They are found in many ruins of Roman and Greek latrines around the Mediterranean region. The oldest proof of using pesoi dates back to the 6th century BC and was found in Orvieto, Italy. It is a Greek kilix wine cup, showing a squatting man using one of uh, pesoi. Wow, I still cannot understand why someone would want to place such a picture on a drinking cup. <laughs> well, pesoi were often reshaped, uh, polished to make the edges and angles smooth for the user's comfort. Their usual size was 3 to 10 cm in diameter, which is 1 to 4 inches, and a half to 2 cm in thickness, which is respectively 0.2 to 0.7 inch. Fun fact! Pesoi were sometimes inscribed with the names of enemies. Other widely spread toilet utility there was tersorium or Xylospongium, from Greek xylon, wood, and spongos, sponge. It reminds more of a brush for cleaning the utilities rather than the user of those. Perhaps that is the reason why archaeologists argue about its precise use. Roman latrines looked like that. No privacy at all. What is more gross, it is speculated that xylospongium was passed around and stored on place, soaked in a bucket of salt water or a vinegar solution, rather than everyone had their own. Xylospongium was first mentioned in the 1st century AD in philosopher Seneca's letters to Roman official Lucilius. The phrase Utaris xylospongio was also inscribed on a fresco in the baths of the seven sages in Ostia in the 2nd century AD. China at the same time used bamboo or wooden spatulas wrapped in cloth. Similar spatulas were used in Japan. Here is a picture of a person doing what he does and holding a stick to wipe later. By the way, this whole painting is about witches hunting for fresh, you know what, to consume it. Didn't you have anything else to paint? Chinese were the first people to use paper in a way we do it today. They invented paper in the 2nd century BC, but the first record of using it in a toilet purpose is from 589 AD, found in the texts of scholar Yan Chitui, who wrote. Paper, on which there are quotations or commentaries from the five classics or names of sages, I dare not use for toilet purposes. This indicates that the second dirty nature of paper was slowly gaining traction. According to the writings of Arab traveler to China from 851 AD, the Chinese do not wash themselves with water when they have done their necessities, but they only wipe themselves with paper. 
Toilet paper made specifically for hygiene was first produced on a large scale in the 14th century China, in 1391 during the Ming dynasty. China's Imperial Bureau of Supplies started to produce for emperor's family alone 720,000 square sheets of toilet paper per year and 15,000 sheets of soft texture kind and even perfumed. Apart from that, during the 14th century, the region of Xinjiang produced 10 million packages containing from 1,000 to 10,000 sheets of toilet paper each year. In medieval Europe, hay balls kept in containers were still most popular. In the 15th century, thanks to Silk Road, paper was in global use. Humanity slowly started using paper mostly to write, but when scroll book or letter was read and not much cared for, in the end of the day, paper is still only paper, so, you know, use it. In the 18th century, printing and publishing were on the rise. Newspapers and books were more and more popular. No wonder that, for example, cheap editions of popular books were used for wiping. In 1747, Lord Chesterfield, in a letter to his son, mentions a man who purchased a common edition of Horace and gradually used it in his restroom. This 1792 French revolutionary caricature depicts how Fox of France feel and use the monarchist Brunswick Manifesto. At the same time, in colonial America, people also switched from very popular at that time corn cobs to newspapers and magazines. The most popular toilet literature were the Sears Catalog and the Farmer's Almanac. People used to punch a hole with a nail and hang them in homes, barns and outhouses. Hence, after a century from the first edition in 1919, the Farmer's Almanac finally met the client's expectations and published the magazine already with the famous hole in the left corner. At first, the Sears catalog was a more popular choice, but in 1930s, it started to be printed on a glossy paper, which is useless for the obvious reasons. So, the Farmer's Almanac gained even more Mm, users. The year 1857 will forever be the year of the first commercial production of toilet paper, or should I say, medicated paper for the water closet. People of that time were very prude in terms of hygiene and words toilet paper were not sophisticated enough to make money for its inventor, American Joseph Gaetti whose name, Gaetti, was watermarked on every sheet of his medicated paper. Why would you want to put your name on every sheet of toilet paper? A mystery. Gaetti's paper packages were flat, moist and with aloe and advertised as a remedy for hemorrhoids. The greatest necessity of the age, its slogan stated. A package of 500 sheets cost about 50 cents, which was equivalent of today's 12 dollars. The Gaetis product, due to many free alternatives, was doomed. However, it disappeared as late as 1920s. After Joseph Gaetis' business tend to sh failed, many others undertook this paper enterprise and tried to achieve what we know today as a roll of soft toilet paper, but it will take them many, many years to get there. In the 19th century, more or less at the same time, Two inventors came up with the idea of a toilet roll. In 1879, Englishman Walter Alcock produced the first toilet paper on a roll, instead of the flat sheets. But he was unsuccessful to advertise and sell it to the Victorian society. However, in 1871, American Seth Wheeler from Albany, New York, USA, called the father of toilet paper, patented the first rolled and perforated wrapping paper. The patent was issued under the official title Improvement in Wrapping Papers. So, the idea of paper on a roll was still in the head of Mr. Wheeler, because in 1883 he obtained the earliest US patents for manufacturing improved perforated wrapping paper on a roll with dispensers, and eight years later, in 1891, 
A shape of toilet paper we know today was finally put on a patent list under, yes, you guessed it, steel wrapping or toilet paper. Man, what can you wrap in toilet paper? Finally, in 1897, Wheeler and his Albany Perforated Wrapping Paper Company began selling and advertising perforated toilet paper on a roll. And now it gets interesting. I don't know the quirks of patent law in the US from that time, but it was not Wheeler who was successful in selling and promoting toilet paper on a roll. It was Scott Brothers, Thomas Edward and Clarence, who in 1879 founded the Scott Paper Company in Philadelphia, and in 1890 their company totally dominated the American market, introducing the first brand of toilet paper in rolls. So, Scott's paper was the first toilet paper successfully sold in rolls. Each roll was individually packed and sold in drugstores and pharmacies. Scott Brothers understood the market and conservative society where toilet was considered taboo. That is why, for a commission paid by hotels, druggists and barbers, the Scott Paper Company made toilet paper under brands those mentioned hotels, druggists and barbers came up with. In short, the Scott Paper Company was making toilet paper but for other companies. They started making their own toilet paper under the brand Waldorf in 1902, which in the following years becomes the best-selling toilet paper in the world. Also, at the beginning of the 20th century, they finally used the company name and start making toilet paper under Scott Tissue. They were advertising their product in health magazines and health section of regular newspapers. Well, selling toilet paper as medical and health promoting product was more acceptable. And since the 19th century was the age of progress, more and more houses had plumbing and flushing toilets, Scott Brothers also advertised their product as a pipe-friendly, not causing clogging. The Scott Paper Company's first effective slogan was soft as old linen. An interesting fact is that during the Great Depression, they didn't lay off a single worker and didn't reduce production. So, in 1930s, toilet paper must have been a frequent guest in American homes despite the economy's collapse. The year 1928 is another important year in history of toilet paper, when the Hoberg Paper Company from Wisconsin, USA introduced charming toilet paper, which was advertised on a principle of softness instead of purpose. And that got on so well that for the first time toilet paper was no longer considered a luxury, but a necessity. The same year, in Germany, Hans Klenk founded the rolled toilet paper brand Hackel from the first letters of his name. The German company, in 1972, will bring the world's first three-ply toilet paper Für meine Damen und Herren. One ply, three ply, but the toilet paper of the 1930s was still not the paper we know today. One of the most common risks of using toilet paper of that time were splinters. Ugh. And we can thank the American company Northern Tissue, which in those mentioned 1930s developed technology called linenizing that eliminated wood splinters in toilet paper for good. Their advertised splinter-free toilet paper was a hit. In my humble opinion, getting rid of splinters from toilet paper is one of the biggest technological achievements of humanity. Meanwhile, in 1942 in Europe, England, St. Andrew Mill developed two-ply toilet paper which was much softer, that will dominate Western Europe under the brand Andrex, a brand that will also be known from another reason. In 1990s, Andrex sold wet wipes as a flushable product. Well, contrary to toilet paper which uh, fibers are very short, that's the reason why toilet paper disintegrates in contact with water, wet wipes have long fibers, hence they are not so flushable and become a crucial ingredient in creating huge sewer clogs known as fatbergs. 
show informative actions preventing flushing wet wipes were conducted throughout the United Kingdom. There are two kinds of toilet paper. Apart from the difference in texture, scents and the number of plies, etc. One is made from virgin paper. Paper made from fresh batch of chipped wood turned into pulp without any recycled materials. Water is added, then some chemicals to extract fibers and more chemicals like uh, chlorine dioxide to bleach it into a nice white final product. And there is recycled toilet paper. Less white and cheaper. And no, it is not made from already used toilet paper. The process is similar to the virgin paper, but there are some steps to remove ink from the newspapers, office paper, old magazines and whatever is thrown into the pulverizer. For example, in Australia, Victoria zoos and their animals promote using this eco paper with slogan Wipe for Wildlife, which is understandable when one average tree can be turned into about 1000 toilet paper rolls, although some sources say it is a few hundred rolls. 83 million of those rolls are produced each day, and it is speculated that 27,000 trees per day go down the toilet. Unfortunately, here is a downside to the recycling process. Bleaching chemicals react with pulp and previously used uh, chemicals like ink and paint create toxins that may affect skin. Some companies experiment with leftovers from processed sugar canes and hemp. Side note, I do not mention bidets because in order to use it you still have to use toilet paper in the first stage of uh, cleaning and as such they seem to have little influence on global toilet paper usage, although the bidet users might use less toilet paper. Toilet paper may not always be on a roll, sometimes it can be sold in sheets to be used in dispensers. In the US, the shape of a normal toilet paper sheet was 11 cm by 10 cm, which is 4.5 inch by 4 inch. An interesting fact is that even in this industry, dirty tricks are present. Some leading producers shaved dimension of a regular toilet paper sheet by half of the centimeter, which is 0.2 of an inch, leaving the price for full size. <laughs> are you sh <clears throat> shaving me? Toilet paper during the First and the Second World War was used as a moral uplifting tool on both sides of the front. Of course, if you were lucky enough to find a toilet during a battle to contemplate what was uh, printed on it. The events of 2020 taught us not to take toilet paper for granted. But in recent history, toilet paper shortages were not as uncommon as one may think. In 1973, the Japanese people, being afraid of the oil crisis and instability it would cause, started hoarding toilet paper, what uh, led to shortages and rationing. That is probably why the Japanese invented two things. Paperless toilets, where everything is done by the water sprinkling gizmo, and white gold by Nakabayashi. A hundred thousand dollar worth office machine turning useless printed Excel sheets into toilet paper rolls. While in 1973 Japan panicked with toilet paper, an American comedian Johnny Carson joked on his show about toilet paper shortages in the USA, causing them to happen, despite there weren't any problems with toilet paper in America. Uh, of all the shortages we have, there's a gasoline shortage. You know what else is disappearing from the supermarket shelves? Toilet, Toilet paper. <laughs> ha ha ha, you can laugh now. <laughs> there is an acute shortage of, of toilet paper in the good old United States. We gotta quit writing on it. Several days later. 
The Scott Paper Company, citing panic buying on the retail level, said today it is implementing an allocation system for the national distribution of toilet tissue. A Scott spokesman said unfounded rumors of a shortage has caused excessive demand at retail outlets. It was what is now called a self-fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> Toilet paper also acted as a litmus paper between Western world and Eastern bloc. While West had many brands and types of toilet paper, Eastern bloc people had one. Short, grey and hard. Just like a life there. And to buy it was even harder than to wipe with it. Shortages in Eastern bloc were so common that those who were able to buy some always bought all they could wear as a bandolier. Some even managed to pick up girls on it. This phenomenon of love for toilet paper in Soviet land was even depicted in the 1984 American movie starring Robin Williams, Moscow on the Hudson. Ну почему все так возбуждаются в этой семье из-за туалетной бумаги? Сашенька, пожрать и посрать единственное человеческое счастье. I live there. And in 100% I agree with it. In 2018, due to hyperinflation in Venezuela, a roll of toilet paper there cost 2,600,000 bolivars. That is 40 US cents. And as you see, it was more paper in bills than on the roll. Other modern problem concerning toilet paper is its orientation, over or under. The 60-70 majority of American consumers prefer over. Me? After surviving communism, I don't care at all. The red cat you saw steals it no matter how I put it. Ever heard of toiligami? It is toilet paper origami, an art of folding the first paper sheet of a new roll for hotel guests. This practice is known worldwide. Often, it's just folding the V shape. But in Japanese hotels, where toilegami is the most popular, you can find very elaborate folding. While we are talking about things made from toilet paper, wedding dresses are one of the most often made not bathroom related things. Hmm, well, that says something about your marriage for sure. I bet that you didn't know that before Nokia started making phones, they also made this indispensable thing in the bathroom. Yes, Nokia did make toilet paper. Think about it next time you take your phone there. While you travel around the world, in some places you may come across a restroom that prohibits flushing toilet paper due to old plumbing. After use, you should place it in a bin next to a bowl. On space stations, they also do not flush toilet paper, but use special ziplocks. Toilet paper as a weapon of mass destruction. Why not? Tipping somebody's house or car means using toilet paper in vandal activity. Toilet paper unrolls as it flies across a tree or house and because it tears easily, it's hard to clean it, especially after rain. And the last place you'd expect to find toilet paper may be your car. Yes, some companies make car oil filters where you change only a toilet paper roll, which is responsible for cleaning engine oil. Despite it looks weird, I think that it is quite a practical solution. So, there you have it. From corn cobs through sticks and stones to car parts, an ultimate history of toilet paper. The most important paper in life. Thank you very many for watching and remember to flush. <coughs> uh, I meant subscribe. Bye. Uh.